Hey guys, Happy New Year. It's officially 2024 and I am so happy that 2023 is over because that year was just a little too much for me. There was too much going on and I'm really ready for a fresh start and I hope you will join me because I have a lot of videos planned for this year and I think it's best to start with yarn. So I've already done a favorite yarn for Mosaic Crochet video back in June of 2022. And since then, there have been a lot of changes. Um, I've been experimenting more with different brands, trying out different types of yarn. And also I've been on a mission to find the best blanket yarn because it's time for me to do a new blanket, don't you think? <laughs> And if you've stuck around with me for a long time, you know that I can't deal with acrylic yarn. So this entire video is gonna be basically about all of the yarn that I use on a regular basis. So a lot of cotton, a lot of wool, and some blends, and I have some weird ones thrown in there too. So as you can see, I'm in front of my yarn wall here, and yeah, this actually is all of the yarn that I own. I don't have another room filled with yarn. I am so jealous of the people that have yarn rooms. This is all I have. And the reason why I don't have that much yarn is because I'm so particular about what I use for Mosaic Crochet. Because a lot of yarn just doesn't work for it. So I don't end up buying anything other than yarn for Mosaic Crochet because that's all I do. <laughs> so all of the yarn behind me is worsted weight and we have all the cotton on this side and all the wool on this side. And on the very bottom, I have all of my blends and weird yarns and things like that. So yeah, this is what I actually use and that's what we're gonna talk about today. So what makes a good yarn for Mosaic Crochet? Well, I've done a video already showing all of the pros and cons to different types of yarn. It really all depends on the project that you're using, but for the most part, you wanna find a yarn that is smooth, consistent, and has a little bit of fluff, a little bit of squish to it, because when you're doing the overlay stitches, you really want that yarn to cover the row behind it. That is the key to having good mosaic crochet yarn. A yarn that wouldn't work well for mosaic crochet, and I've tried, I've tried to love this kind of yarn because the colors are always so beautiful, but Mercerized is like my enemy. It's because it, there is not, there's no, there's no fluff to it. It's just almost like a cord. So what I have here is a cotton yarn and yeah, cotton does work, but when it's mercerized, that means that they add a chemical process to it, which makes it a whole lot more durable, but it's not very good for mosaic crochet because like you can see, there is absolutely no give to this yarn. There is no fluffiness. It is hard like string. And I just found this extremely difficult to work with because you end up seeing a lot of the holes and you see a lot of the rows behind it and it doesn't end up looking very clean. And then on the other side of the spectrum, you don't wanna have a yarn that is too fluffy, too fuzzy, too thick and bouncy because this kind of yarn ends up distorting the design. This will cause too much of the yarn to fill out the different shapes and you don't want that either. You wanna find that like happy medium where you're covering the rows behind but still you have that crisp, clean stitch definition. So you can see a yarn like this, it's kind of inconsistent. There is a lot of bounce to it. You can pull it and stretch it, it bounces back and it has a lot of loose fibers. Of course, if you wanna use a yarn like this, sure, go right ahead. But I find this does not produce the best clean designs and we want the best results. Okay, now that we've talked about all the yarn that doesn't work, I am now gonna officially show you my favorites for 2024. So let's start with my favorite everyday yarn to use for Mosaic Crochet, and that is Barocco Vintage. So the reason why I like using Barocco Vintage for everyday projects is because their color range is amazing. You can really find any color that you want. You can create your own gradients with all the different colors they have. And funny enough, it's actually like my favorite black. It is the blackest black yarn that you can find. And I know a lot of you are probably screaming at your computer right now because 
because nobody likes black yarn. But I mean, I use black yarn in every single one of my designs. There's like very few times where I don't use black yarn. So I really like having a super dark yarn, especially because the key to good mosaic crochet is contrast. So if you have bright colors or muted colors or anything, you want to have like a nice deep punch you in the face black. And Barocco Vintage to me has the best black. It's weird because it has a little bit of shine to it. It's almost like, uh, I don't know, it just reflects the, the light in a way where it makes it look darker than all the other yarns that I have in my collection. So I don't know, it could just be me, but this is my favorite black and it's also my favorite like everyday yarn. And I say everyday yarn because it, to me it is a bit affordable, especially when you go into local yarn shops, you might come across some very expensive, luxurious, like dream yarns. And this one, I feel like, you know, you could get a few skeins, make a pillow or two, and it's not going to break the bank. I also trust Barocco Vintage because I've used them for so long. I've never had a problem with like the yarn not being consistent or clean or having any like issues. It's always like it's a reliable yarn. So I have this pillow right here that I made using Barocco Vintage and I love this as an example because this pillow actually sits on my couch that my son lays on all the time. So he actually abuses the hell out of this pillow. So this is a good example to show you that, yeah, it does get a little fuzzy over time, but it's still, for some reason, the stitches and the, the stitch definition and the details of the pattern and everything like still looks really good considering this got abused. <laughs> So it might, I know it might be a little bit hard to see, but we do have a little bit of fuzzies here because this is an acrylic and wool blend yarn. And that is to be expected with acrylic yarn. But I feel like the quality of this yarn is definitely a lot better than other acrylics that I've used. And like I said, you get all these like crisp, clean details, especially because you can see this is black next to white. You got some white fuzzies over here. But really, overall... I think it looks really good. I've never been disappointed with Baroque Vintage, so that is my top pick for just everyday yarn. So let me show you a little bit of what the actual yarn looks like so you can see for yourself. I find this to be a very easy yarn to crochet with. Nice and smooth, doesn't get stuck on your hook. Just nice and easy, basic stitches looks nice and clean. Yeah, Barocco Vintage for the win. Okay, so my next pick is for my favorite blanket yarn. And this is an entirely new category for me because I haven't made a blanket since the All Skulls blanket. And the yarn I used for that was literally the worst yarn I've ever used in my entire life. <laughs> so I feel very... Um, offended by how bad that yarn was, that I have been on a full-on mission to find a better yarn that isn't going to break the bank and is still going to be beautiful and is going to be washable and last a long time. And I feel like hopefully I found the right blanket yarn this time. So without further ado, my favorite blanket yarn is Cascade Pacific. And this is actually the first time I'm talking about Cascade Pacific because this was not a yarn that I had used before. This is something that I found fairly recently, almost on accident, and it was because I was searching for neon yarn and um, they have neons. So you might be asking yourself, why am I throwing all my eggs into one basket if I've never used this yarn before? Um, well, I've got one pillow so far that I've used this yarn for. But the reason why I'm going all in with this yarn is because I did a whole bunch of swatches. This isn't all of them, but I've done a ton of swatches and did the rub test and then threw them in the washer and then threw them in the dryer. And out of all the samples that we have here of all of the, these are mostly wool acrylic blend yarn that I think would be the best candidates for blankets. And this one really was the winner. 
I kept its stitch definition. There are still no fuzzies, which there's acrylic in it. There should be fuzzies, right? There aren't. It's so amazing. But I, I mean, after crocheting the pillow and doing this little sample here, I'm, I'm ready to just dive right in. But yeah, I love the color range. I love that this is like a thick, squishy yarn. It's nice and it's got clean fibers and it's only like $8 a skein. So I feel like if we're under $10 already, uh, that's a big win for me. Anyway, let's zoom in a little bit so I can show you some of the details and you can decide for yourself if you like this yarn. All right, so here is the sample I was talking about. And I mean, yeah, the edges look a little bit rough because like I said, I roughed this up real good and I washed it and dried it and, it looks so, so good. There's no pills anywhere. Even the part, and I like really roughed this up, I really don't see any evidence that this is going to be a yarn that falls apart. This looks like it's really going to hold up well, and so I'm going to go for it. And we have some of the yarn that you can see close up. And I really, I fell in love with this yarn originally because they have a bunch of neons and I have just been looking for neon yarn for so many projects because I'm obsessed with neon yarn but so excited that they had especially neon yellow neon yellow is the best <laughs> but yeah it stitches up really nicely it is so clean it is really easy to use this is my pick for blanket yarns and now we are going to talk about my favorite wool yarn. And I had a very hard time trying to find just a regular wool yarn that I liked. So I actually just went with my favorite merino wool. I feel like for some reason merino wool is a lot smoother, it's more consistent. This could just be because I haven't found the right brand that I like yet, but I mean, I feel like I've scoured the ends of the earth and I haven't found a good just straight up wool yarn that I like. And let me go on a little side tangent real quick here. <laughs> so in my journey to find a good wool superwash, because I really need the, all of my stuff to be washable, in my journey, I found Universal Yarns and I thought, hey, I'll give them a try. I haven't used their yarns before. Maybe they're a good brand. And I found a lot of their yarn on the Premier Yarn website. And so after doing a little bit of digging and a little bit of research, I discovered that I guess uh, Premier maybe owns Universal or they're a sister company, something like that. So Premier has more of like a budget yarn and like this is their, their very, very affordable superwash worsted wool yarn, which I was hoping to fall in love with because this big boy right here is $6, which is like crazy. That is so affordable. And then I've even seen it on sale a few times. Crazy. But then... I went on the Universal website and I found a similar thing here and I was a little surprised because it looks the same, it feels the same, it crochets the same, and it's $12. So what is going on? Like, is this the same brand? Hold on, let's go a little further. Okay, so whenever I buy yarn and I'm trying it for the first time, I like to get a black, a white, a teal and a purple. That's just what I do. That is my favorite colors. So in trying to find a black on both of those websites, I ended up getting this. I know they look slightly different, but like I said, this one's $6, this one's $12, but they look basically the same and neither one of them is true black. So what's up with that? So the other black that they had is more of a black heather and oh wow we have the same exact yarn again but like why so neither one of these brands has a true black and the blacks they do have are like <laughs> they're not that good <laughs> so I was curious I'm like so how are their teals they're almost exact. Like, is this the same yarn? Is this the same yarn just rebranded? 
because like I really felt like Universal was a more high-end yarn brand and I felt like Premier was a like cheaper lesser brand but please tell me that this is not the same yarn. This like looks like the same exact yarn. Anyway, I know I went off on this whole big tangent and I'm kind of convinced that they're the same company and it's the same yarn, but who knows? I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I know, but like, I just, I kind of felt like duped. Like, you know, when you go to a grocery store and you buy, you know, the name brand stuff and then you buy the generic and like when you find out that the generic tastes kind of like the name brand and you're like, is it the same freaking thing? Am I being like duped here? Anyway, so at the end of the day, I'm not putting these on my favorites. I do love their cotton yarn, um, but we'll get to that. This is, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do with this, but we'll see. <laughs> Okay, I'm back from my tangent. <laughs> anyway, my favorite merino solid wool is Plymouth Superwash Merino. And this is such a unique yarn to me. This doesn't feel like a lot of the other yarn that I have in my stash. It's got such a different structure to it. Like I, I don't, I personally don't have anything else in my collection that feels just like this yarn. Like this is to me something special. I just love the texture of this yarn. Like I just, I want to use it for all my pillows. If, if it was a little bit cheaper, I would love to make blankets with this. This is such a, it's like a, it's a squishy, but luxurious and like, I don't know, it's my go-to for my standard everyday merino wool. And because I make a lot of pillows, merino wool is my best friend. But here is a pillow that I made using the Plymouth Superwash Merino and just the stitch definition alone on this is so awesome and it feels like a dream. It is so clean. Like, look how clean those stitches are. This is such, oh my God, I love this yarn. This is my everyday. Um, their color range is pretty decent. I wish it could be a little bit more like, hey, Plymouth, give me a call and I'll help you with your colors. Like, let's make some colors because I love this yarn. Let's zoom in here so you can see all the stitches. So here is a close-up of the pillow here. This is the hand signs pattern, and it's the I love you hand sign. This is just absolutely like amazing stitch definition. And now I want to show you what the actual yarn looks like. You can kind of see that the structure of this yarn is a lot of very tiny strands wrapped together and I feel like that is that might be the key to a very good mosaic crochet yarn like this might be an eight ply possibly but oh that is that's got such a good structure to it it is so clean and easy to work with and yeah that is my pick for my favorite merino wool Okay, now let's talk about my favorite merino variegated wool. So Plymouth makes an awesome everyday solid yarn that is good for just about anything, but Madeline Tosh Vintage is just the most luxurious, inspiring, gorgeous, oh, I can't say enough about this yarn. This was one of my favorites from the last video, and it's still one of my favorites today. Their colorways are so interesting, and you just kind of want to try them all and see what you can do with them. It also has a very unique texture that I haven't found in, an, in a lot of other yarn brands, especially ones that are more of like the hand dyed yarns. This one is a lot more like dense and solid, almost like the cotton yarn that I showed you at the very beginning of the video, but because it is thicker and it is a wool, it does stretch and bounce back. So you have that nice like density and thickness and and it's 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 a very voluptuous yarn. Oh, and the texture is gorgeous. It's super soft. 
But seriously, I love their colors. Ah, oh, they're so fun to work with. Oh, I would love to just buy their entire array of yarns. But um, at $29 a skein, like I mentioned last time, it's something that you want to save up for. It's something that you use for a very special project. It makes for some of the most luxurious pillows you could imagine. And if you are making a pillow for someone that you absolutely love, use this yarn. If you don't love them that much, use a budget yarn. But this one, this is for the people that oh, you want to knock their socks off, this is the one. <laughs> so I, although I absolutely love their variegated and unique colorways, their black and their solid colors aren't always very saturated you will still have a little bit of like color that isn't completely dyed all the way through the yarn but like whatever this yarn is so good if you want what i've done is i'll use one of their awesome crazy colors and i'll pair it with a good solid black or a solid white or another solid color so both of them will work really well together all right, so let's zoom into the Madeline Tosh vintage yarn. And oh, I could see how clean this yarn is. There is not a single fuzz in sight. The colors are so vibrant. Let me even look at this side here. Once again, this is a pillow and the lights are flashing directly at it. So you can see a lot more holes, but usually you don't see any of these holes. And let's take a close look at the yarn so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. This yarn is very like dense but smooth and a lot of merino wool will be a little more bouncy than this. This is a very dense yarn. Even like the, the weight is a little bit different for this one. I think this one is... Yeah, 115 grams, so it's a little bit heavier, and they give you 200 yards for a worsted weight, and it just crochets up so easily and nicely, and I just love this yarn. Yeah, this is my favorite for those crazy hand-dyed merino wools. If you're going a little more luxury, go for this one. And now we are ready to talk about cotton yarn. So before I wrote my book, uh, Dark and Dramatic Mosaic Crochet, I was all about paint box cotton ran for basically all of my projects that I was using cotton for. But I was kind of on the fence because I did not like that their skeins were so small. So I wanted to try out different brands like Cascade and I really thought that Cascade was going to be the best yarn for Mosaic Crochet. Um, and it was. It was for a long time. I mean, most of the cotton projects in this book right here call for Cascade Nifty Cotton. And I hate to say it, but that is not my favorite cotton yarn brand anymore. I know brands go through changes and they switch to different manufacturers. And I feel like that's kind of what Cascade went through. Um, I don't know. There's a lot of stuff behind the scenes that I don't know too much about, but I feel like since they've switched to a different manufacturer in a different country, the quality has been a little bit better. I'm still like on the fence about using them for a lot of projects because like <laughs> they kind of hurt my feelings. Like they, like the quality really did go down. Um, a lot of the projects in my book use Cascade yarn. And like I said, I like fell in love with Cascade Pacific. So there's no way that I am giving up on Cascade. But as far as their cotton yarn goes, I'm going to take a little break because I feel like I found a better one. Woohoo! So my pick for my favorite everyday cotton yarn is actually Universal Cotton Supreme. And uh, if you remember from earlier in the video and my little rant about Universal and Premier, um, I feel like their cotton yarn is a little bit different though. The Universal Cotton Supreme. I really like this yarn. I've had a lot of luck with it so far. Um, and then like Premier Cotton Sprout is like very, very similar. They also have very similar colors, so they could be the same yarn. They're also like $6 and $12, even though you can get these for on sale pretty often. 
um, but I just I like the colors better with this one and um, yeah I've had a lot of luck with this cotton so I'm gonna put this as my number one spot for now because like look how awesome this came out oh. I don't know if you know this, but I love teal. Um, <laughs> anyway, this is a placemat that I made using a combination of hand-dyed merino wool and cotton, and this is the Universal Cotton Supreme. And I just really felt this was a very easy cotton to work with. It glides very nicely on your hook, because some cottons can be very uh, hard to use. But this one is very smooth. I really do like the texture and consistency of this yarn. So right now, this is what I'm going for. And I bought every freaking color that they have back here. So um, I'm going to go for it. So we'll see throughout 2024 um, if this stays as my favorite. But as of right now, I would definitely recommend giving this one a shot. Okay, so let's see a little close-up of this yarn. You can see it fills in really nicely. Um, and these hand-dyed merino wools and pairing them with cotton just comes out so, so pretty. And if you want to see what this yarn looks like stitched up, it is super easy to crochet with. Nice and smooth. Has a little bit of shine to it. It's nice and... Uh, it's just such a pretty, clean cotton, and I find it very easy to crochet with. So this is my top pick for everyday cotton yarn. And now that we've talked about my everyday favorite, let's talk about some luxury favorite cotton. So my favorite Pima cotton is Barocco Pima 100. And this was a yarn that I was just trying out in the last video when I was talking about, oh wow, I found an amazing yarn that's super luxurious and the drape is amazing and it's gonna be so good for different uh, apparel and things like that. And I have made a ton of things using this yarn. Um, even in my book, the Stellar Pattern, the Stellar Shawl uses Barocco Pima 100. So this yarn has been my go-to for making sweaters and scarves and just about anything that you wear because it is soft, it is smooth, it is a luxury cotton, and I personally can't wear anything other than cotton. My skin like just has like a allergic reaction and it's a mess. So I'm stuck with cotton forever and Barocco Pima 100 has been my go-to, and I really love the stitch definition. There's not a lot of holes. It's super easy to work with. Yeah, I can't recommend this one enough. I really think you all should give it a try if you haven't already. The one thing that I have to complain about is that the color range is kind of lame. Um, they do have some brighter pops of colors that they've come out with over the years, but for the most part, you're dealing with a lot of neutrals, which this is fine because this ends up looking awesome with black. Other than that, it's kind of like lackluster. Um, if you find your favorites and your basics, then it's a really good one. But like, as for like creating a gradient, that's not going to happen. Um, I wish they would expand a little bit more because these yarns are so beautiful to work with and they just wear so well. Anyway, that is my absolute number one pick for a Pima cotton yarn. And if you want a little close-up of the yarn, you could even see that like there really aren't even that many holes in this one. And this is such an awesome yarn. It's surprising how easy it is to work with, especially because it is so like soft. You would think you would get a lot of holes with a design like this but like look how clean this is this is like awesome i love how this one came out and then i added fringe to the bottom here you can kind of see it's just a nice structure and i wore this sweater at rhinebeck for an entire day and just it wore so well there's no pills there's no fuzzies it's just it's like brand new like the day i made it love it and if you want a bit of a close-up of the yarn, it is very smooth, very clean. There are no fuzzies whatsoever. And there's a little bit of shine in it because it is Pima cotton. 
I just love working with Pima Cotton for Mosaic Crochet. Okay, so I know I said that the Barocco Pima 100 was kind of like meh when it came to light colors. Well, I got super excited when I found out that Malabrigo actually makes cotton yarn. Like, who knew that? I've only ever seen their wool yarn in stores. I've never seen their cotton yarn in stores. I actually found it online and I was like, what? That's a thing? And they're nice and vibrant and fun and interesting and they have a ton of different tonal versions and although they have some that are variegated, I don't think they look as good and they're a little too busy to work well with Mosaic Crochet but their tonals are like oh, so, so cool. This lime green one that has a little bit of yellow in it is so vibrant. And really, I actually think that the quality of this yarn actually slightly surpasses the Baroque of Pima 100. Um, I wouldn't say that their solids are better. It's like, so this one would be amazing for adding an accent and then I would still use the Barocco Pima 100 for like solid black or white or your neutrals. And I've used this a few times. This one was used in the Murder of Crows scarf that I made. And you can see this one has a little tonal purpley blue color. It's a little more interesting than just straight up blue or purple. Um, so that's what I really like about it, but I still go back to the Barocco Pima 100 for my solids as I did for like the tassels of this one. And here's a little close up so you can see how beautiful this yarn is. There's just a little bit of variation in color between the blues and the purples and it is so soft and just so drapey and the fringe comes out beautiful and it's so fun to wear. So let's look at what this yarn looks like up close. And just like the other Pima cotton, it is super smooth, nice and clean. The color is vibrant and it is very, very easy to crochet with, just like the other Pima but your hook just slides right through without any problem. And the stitches are nice and clean. Very beautiful yarn. And the last cotton yarn that I want to talk about is one that was one of my favorites from the previous video, and that is Barocco Modern Cotton. Now this yarn seems to continue to surprise me over the years. You'd think that I'd just get used to the fact that it's super durable, it's got a little shine to it, it's kind of like a luxury but affordable yarn. Um, all of these things and I don't use it as much as I want to and the main reason is because their color range is like... <laughs> They do have some colors that have been nice over the years, but like they really need to up their color range because I would use the heck out of this yarn if they had better colors. Even like their black is kind of like dull um, and not like a real saturated black. It's just like, I don't know, they could do so much better with colors. But as for like the structure, there's not a fuzz in sight. It washes like a dream. It is the most durable yarn in my entire collection. And although I've been saying for years that it's really good for bags, when I made the lobster pattern using this as a table runner, I was like, wow, this looks so, so good. I was always just using it for, for other things, but I now think I found a new favorite for flat panel projects. But yeah, let's, uh, let's zoom in so you can see what I'm talking about. So here is my lobster pattern, and oh, look how nice and clean all of these stitches are. And I had this out on my table all summer. Since I came out with this pattern, this has been sitting on my bar in my kitchen and everyone was putting, you know, glasses and bottles and things and just, it, it's, it's gone through a lot of use. And it's just, it's like pristine condition since the day that I made it. This bag is super old. This was a cosmetic bag that I made 
um, probably in 2021 and I packed it filled with stuff and you can see there is no not a fuzz in sight this is the cleanest yarn I have ever seen really the quality for mosaic crochet is so awesome and now let's get up close and personal with the yarn itself and again it is very easy to crochet with it is um <laughs> let me take that back <laughs> okay so it is easy to crochet with it does slide through your hook but it does split and it splits because this yarn is consisting of eight of these tiny little baby threads right there and they're all super shiny and super th slick um that's what makes up this yarn and I feel like we've seen this already a lot of the yarns that I find that I love crocheting with for mosaic crochet have at least eight strands and for some reason they just crochet up so nicely this one it splits I know I don't know weigh the pros and cons and if splitting is a big issue for you this might not be your favorite yarn but I would give it a chance because again this is the best for durability and now we're ready to talk about some novelty yarn so when I went to Rhinebeck New York for their wool and sheep festival I came across a gradient yarn that just was yeah pretty on the skein but I didn't realize how awesome it was when you crochet it up so this is a hundred ravens gradient cake and if you can see right there how smooth this color transition is I've never seen something so beautiful before and it is so exciting to see a yarn like this especially because this is a hand dyed yarn um, I don't have an actual cake to show you because I used it all up right here. I have another one that I ordered that was, I think it's called Lestat, and it is a black to red gradient, which is, ooh, I'm so excited to get that one. Um, that one is currently being dyed and hopefully will be mailed to me soon, but I'm so excited to use that one. But um, this is the coolest gradient that I've ever seen. Like it is so, it, like the transition is so smooth. There are a lot of gradient yarns that I've seen where you have an actual like line that separates the different colors. And although like, uh, you know, it does gradiate a bit throughout, but there's still like a break. This like, there's no break. This is, this is talented work right here. Like I'm so impressed. This is a hundred percent merino wool. It is a little expensive. It is so freaking worth it though. Like I've never seen anything like this. So let's zoom in a little bit closer to this pillow so you can kind of see how the stitches look. And you can see even very up close how smooth that color transition is. And this is a very overstuffed pillow and still the yarn is close enough to cover up all those holes and it just looks absolutely beautiful. This is actually a DK weight. Um, so there are, there's a few more yardage. It's a little bit thinner, but because there is 230 yards for a hundred grams, it, it does kind of look more like a worsted in my opinion. And it works well with worsted weight yarn, which is what this white outline color is here. Yeah. I highly recommend giving them a try. And if you've followed me for any length of time, you know that I am addicted to metallic yarn. <laughs> I absolutely love the idea of a metallic yarn. And the yarn that I remember as a kid that my grandma used to use was super hard and rough. And it was a very aggressive, but very metallic and very sparkly yarn. And she would actually make clothes and dresses and all of these things with metallic yarn. And I think that's like stuck in my head. And I've always wanted to use metallic yarn, but it, it's like, 
I, I'm so happy that there are other brands that they've come out with that are not as scratchy and hard as the yarn from like the 70s and 80s that my grandma used to use. So although my favorite used to be Metallico, which was from Hobby or Hobie, however you like to say it, <laughs> I've recently become obsessed with ice yarns um, just because I really love how crazy they get with their different colorways. Like where else on earth can you find a variegated purple metallic yarn that's a hundred grams? This is like the yarn of my dreams right here. So um, although I bought this so I can use it to make the skull Christmas balls from my previous video, I love that yarn so much I decided to turn it into a whole pillow. It was so worth it. <laughs> so I'm going to do a little close up of this pillow because the color in this pillow is so fun. So the variegated colors, you have a little bit of silver, a little bit of pink, a little bit of purple. It is so fun and so dimensional. Um, I just, I'm obsessed with these colors. These colors are what absolutely sold me. The only problem that I have with this kind of yarn is, um, you should see what some of my other skeins look like. Like I had to, you know, there, you can do a center pull with these. I kind of recommend that you don't. I would actually recommend just taking this whole thing and turning it into a yarn cake on a, a yarn winder, yarn ball winder, because as you're pulling this through, is it gets stuck very badly on itself. There's a lot of fuzzies, um, and that gets caught up on itself, especially with a big skein like this. And if you want to see real quick how that ends up crocheting up, I find it is pretty easy to crochet with. I like it better when it is caked because then you don't have to deal with pulling through the center of this guy, but look how pretty that is. It is a super pretty fun yarn, a little fuzzy, but as you can see here, it doesn't really distort the design too much. It depends on what you're pairing it with, but yeah highly recommend Ice Yarns. This is Glam Universe. Oh boy, we are down to the final yarn in my favorite yarn video. I get so excited when I find like just yarn that I'm just like, what? who came up with this? Where did this come from? But this is so cool and this works so well in Mosaic Crochet. And this is Taki Tandem yarn and I don't even know if I'm saying that right. But this yarn is like a combination of metallic and cotton and wool and just a little bit of absolutely everything all spun together. And it's just such a fun yarn to crochet with. When I found this, I'm just, I was just like, what is this? <laughs> and then when I finally got it in my hands, I'm like, yeah, this is, this is my kind of jam right here. I'm about to share with you a project that I was uh, planning on hiding until actually doing the video, but this is a little bag that I made using Taki Tandem, and look how cute this came out. This is a little drawstring bag, super cute for crystals or dice and things like that, but just absolutely really cool yarn very unique, never seen anything like this, and I don't know why people don't make more yarn like this. So let's zoom in so you can see better as to what I'm talking about. So yeah, here it is. Look at how crazy this yarn is. There is so many different colors. There's different textures. I, I think it's just such a fun yarn. It feels really nice. It seems very durable. There's no fuzzies whatsoever. So yeah, these are the other two colorways that I ended up picking up and like what, what is going on here? <laughs> this is so cool. Oh, I'm so excited to play around with this one. You see that metallic in there? It's so cool. Anyway, I don't know. As for weird and unusual yarns that work very well for Mosaic Crochet, this is it. Definitely give this one a try. And just for fun, let me show you what this stitches up like. 
it's almost got like a little bit of a gradient in there too. It's just, I don't know, I don't know how to describe this yarn. It's got it all. It's got all sorts of, look at that. Look how freaking cool that is. <laughs> Definitely give that one a go. So what do you guys think of my favorites? Have you tried any of these yarns before? Have you used these for Mosaic Crochet? Have you even heard of some of these ones that I've just now discovered? Let me know in the comments. I'm curious to see what you guys are into. As I've said before, none of these brands endorse me. I'm just doing my own thing. This is yarn that I use for my own personal use and to design patterns with. So although I stand behind all of my decisions, if it doesn't work for you, you may just be a different type of crocheter than me. This video has been like years in the making because I just like kept trying different brands and I just like keep discovering new things and that is what's so much fun about crocheting is just learning new things and I'm sure in 2025 I'll have a whole new list of yarn and maybe we'll just make this a yearly thing I don't know what do you think <laughs> but yeah here is to a much better 2024 and thank you so much for watching and I hope you will consider subscribing and following me on Instagram and Facebook where I post all of my yarn journey and all of my crochet projects and new patterns that are coming out. And again, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.